So swing is an important rhythm in jazz and other types of music. It's one of those kind of things that seems really simple when you first see it, but then as you take a closer look, it's like a little less simple. It's a little more complex than you originally imagined. Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Nick. If you're new here, I'm a Brooklyn-based guitarist, and today I'm going to be talking about what exactly is a swing feel. If you've ever been like in a high school or middle school band class, you've probably seen something like eighth note equals quarter note triplet and eighth note triplet. And that's generally taken as what swing is, basically the triplet kind of thing. Although if you talk to some horn players, you might not get the same answer. You might get something like, oh, swing feel is eighth notes with an accent and offbeat. Now those are two really big different things. Oftentimes you hear the rhythm section thinking in triplets and the soloist or the lead player or the melody player thinking in straight eighth notes. Which one is right? Well, both. Today I'm going to dive in a little bit to that. And I just kind of want to preface this by saying like what I'm going to present to you is my interpretation of the swing feel based on what I've transcribed, what I've seen and what I've witnessed in the jazz world in the years that I've been playing jazz. But there's not one exact way to swing and everyone swings a little differently. I'm going to show you some examples later on, but swing feel can be interpreted in a bunch of different ways and people swing very differently and there's not really a right or wrong answer. There's just like this is how he did it, this is how he did it, this is how he did it, this is how I like to do it kind of thing. If you disagree with any of these or you want to give your own input into what swing feel is, feel free to leave that down in the comments. Let's start a discussion about this. But anyway, without further ado, let's dive in. So to demonstrate, this is kind of what the triplet count sounds like. Essentially, it's going to be a quarter note triplet and an eighth note triplet, which means if you're counting the syllables triplet, 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 you're going to hit the tri and you're going to hit the let. Triplet, 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 triplet. If I'm playing a G major scale, it's going to sound like this. Triple let triple let triple let triple let or da 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 you know that's generally kind of considered swing the other like kind of main sort of thought that I'm hearing is accenting on the offbeat one and two and three and four and some people it's like a lazy eighth note it's like an uneven kind of push and pull of the eighth note pulse. Well, I think both of the answers are valid, and I think to really understand it, we have to take a look at the kind of the historical context of all this stuff. Now, swim music kind of became a thing around the 1920s. Back then, you have to remember, we didn't have the internet, we didn't have Spotify, we didn't have all of the internet at our disposal. One time I talked to Chris Potter about this, but the only music selection he had was whatever he had at his local record store. For a lot of these jazz musicians that grew up like in really rural towns in the United States, they didn't really have access to a lot of music. So whatever they had was what they can get. So there's like a lot of this like kind of East Coast versus West Coast swing, and there's like a lot of this stuff. There was the New York jazz scene versus the New Orleans jazz scene, and all these different breeds of genres came out. So there's like tons of different things that came out of this. Now there's not a right or wrong one, we just have to acknowledge them all, and now that we have the internet we can kind of make these little observations. For me the swing feel is a response to what we kind of typically know and it's kind of like a rebellion, it's kind of like going against something. Jazz as a medium has always been sort of like, I want to kind of break misconceptions, I want to push the music forward, it's about innovation, it's about changing what's been done before. And what I think happened is that swing developed as a sort of response to like the classical music with the accents normally placed on one and three. So it's kind of a reversal of that, it was like, let's kind of play this sort of backwards. You know, and you get this cool vibe. When you think about the accents being on two and four, that's essentially the same kind of thing as accenting the upbeats. We can think of it one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, and two, and three, and four, and one, two, three, four. You can think of it in a bunch of different ways, but they're kind of the same rhythm, just one is faster and one is slower. If we speed it up, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, and two, and three, and four, and tuck it to 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 one, two, three, four. And you have the triplet undercurrent kind of going within that. It's kind of all these same things at once and it's up to us to kind of like know how to use it. And in my opinion, the great jazz musicians already know how to use it and are already using it. Let's take a look at the Wayne Shorter solo on Speak No Evil. So now I'm gonna play you the line at the two minute mark. Let's hear this. <laughs> So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna count triplets. I'm gonna go tuck it to tuck it to tuck it to tuck it to one, two, three, four, tuck it to tuck it to tuck it to tuck it to while playing that and see if his line fits within the triplet subdivision nicely. Tuck it to 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 tuck it. So that worked kind of nicely. So he was kind of laying within the triplet subdivision. Now check out the next phrase he plays. This is a 204 marking. This is the next line he plays. One, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one. 
So there he's playing a straight eighth notes, but he went ba ba boo ba boo ba boo ba boo ba He started accenting the offbeat and playing the straight eighth note swing with the offbeat. Wayne, in my opinion, is a master improviser, so it makes sense that he would do this. He basically is using all of the kind of like knowledge as a swing feel that he knows, and he's manipulating it. Swing feel isn't one exact thing, and as we heard, he used both of the two types of swing feels we've been talking about in the same phrase. So now we're going to check out the Chet Baker phrase on his solo on the tune, but not for me. So I'm going to start the phrase at about a minute and 44 seconds in. I'm going to start subdividing triplets, and then I'm going to start subdividing eighth notes, straight eighth notes, whenever he comes in with that line. And you're going to see how he kind of shifts his perspective. <laughs> So within basically the same phrase, there's a little pause and you can kind of hear he switch from the triplet grip to the eighth note grid. Very interesting. So now, knowing that, what does that mean? So like I said earlier, the triplets kind of relate to the rhythm section and the straighter things kind of correlate to the soloist. So the rhythm section is operating within both. They have sort of the straight eighth with the accents. One, two, three, four, chuckachi, 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 chuckachi. And then with a ride symbol, it's going so it's kind of accessing both. Now, that being said, the overall scheme of things seems to be in the triplet subdivision. What happens when you combine triplets and straight eighth notes? Well, those two rhythms are essentially the three over two polyrhythm. One, two, three, triple it, triple it. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and da ga da da ga da da ga da da ga da da so essentially, whenever a musician plays a straight eighth notes with the accents and offbeats, it creates a source of tension. Now, this isn't something that's talked about a lot in music school or a lot in music theory textbooks, but rhythm has a tension of its own and it has its own kind of push and pull of the activity. You know, if you're laying way back on the beat and the drums and the bass are playing right on it, it's going to feel really tense and it's going to kind of be a little difficult. It takes a really strong rhythm section to not kind of accommodate or it takes a strong rhythm section to accommodate. So this is a very difficult concept. It's hard to kind of illustrate on paper how that kind of correlates. But essentially we can see here as the horn players are weaving in and out of the triplet and eighth note grid, what they're doing is essentially creating a sense of tension and momentum. It's the same sort of feeling that we have if I'm playing a C major scale and I end on B. So that is melodic or harmonic tension. We feel the need to resolve back, but the same thing happens with the rhythmic tension. We feel the beat gets pulled back and then finally it snaps back into place and we have the release. And then finally we have these things like quintuplet swings or septuplet swings or non-uplet swings or 11 whatever the word would be, uplet swing. Adam Neely has talked about this a bit. What you're doing when you're doing that is digging the same kind of feeling. When we have a swing feel and triplet ratio, we have the two to one ratio. We have daka, da, daka, da, daka, one, two, one, one, two, one, one, two, one, right? We have the first two triplets grouped together and then just a single triplet by itself. The same kind of thing when we're thinking in quintuplets, but instead of going daka, da, we're going daka, da, daka, daka, da, daka, daka, da, daka, da, daka, da, daka, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. So now instead of two to one ratio, we have three to two. Daka da daka daka da daka daka da daka daka da daka. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. This creates a swing feel on its own. You can do the same thing with seven. Daka 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 da daka 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 da daka 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 da daka 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 da. Or even with nine. Daka daka da daka 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 da daka 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 da daka 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 da daka daka. Same kind of deal. But again, it's the same kind of thing that is pushing and pulling of the beat. So that's about all I have for today. That's about all the feelings I have on swing feel. Haha. But that's about all I have for you today. I really hope you've enjoyed this. I really hope this has been helpful, and I hope you've kind of broadened your understanding of the swing feel. Again, leave any comments if you have anything to add to this or you disagree with any of this part. Please let me know. Let's have a discussion about this because this is kind of like a living organism. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, like and subscribe. There's more videos coming to you every Monday and Thursday. And if you've made it this far, thank you so much for sticking around. And I hope to see you in the next video. Take care.